Hey everyone, it's Val, aka Tricky Crayon. Today what I'm going to be doing with the dulcet tones of my screaming cockatiel in the background is uh, a makeup tutorial, kind of. Um, you might have seen me before do unboxing videos. I did one of this here uh, unicorn brush set from Tarte. Uh, I did one of the Me So Chic collection from Patrick Starr, which was my first MAC makeup. Overall, I'm not really great at makeup. That's not the point here. Uh, the point here is to show you how to do some basic stuff because I feel like at this point, uh, most of what's on YouTube, at least most of what I watch, is people who are really good at makeup showing you how to do really great makeup looks or, you know, it's super glam or it's pride or it's trying out things that you're never gonna buy because they're like $70 for a single item. So um, what I'm gonna do is just like a basic quick look uh, that's not so much complex, not meant to be super fancy, just like a, here's what you might do as some like normal makeup. Um, it's one of the things that I use a lot of my makeup for tends to be stage shows. So this is the kind of thing where like, if you just need to sort of make a reasonably clean look for a stage show, like there you go, you can do that. Um, you will note I don't have glasses on and that's because I'm gonna do makeup. My hair is a hot mess, but I'm gonna put it in a bandana thing anyway, so you're not gonna see it. I mean, after this, you're obviously seeing it right now. Happy Pride. I'm putting on my uh, late 90s, early 2000s crocheted rainbow bandana guy here. My main makeup kit is this giant box. This is my like little main kit of stuff that I actually use often. I also have this, which I do use. I don't use the eyeshadow palette so much whoa recording equipment mostly i use this i literally bought this because i saw it in a in an anti-haul by the way and i saw this feature and i was like no i need it i don't care if this is an anti-haul shout outs to kimberly clark um this actually like this little face palette here is useful it's got some shades that work pretty well for like a little bit of contouring and a little light highlight i have entirely too many lip colors this little bag is full of them the ones this is the this is the bag that I don't use as much this is from Missy Pina by the way she's an artist I love her this is the bag of lips that I do use this is not by Missy Pina it's by Steph something I'll find her on Twitter I literally got all of these little bag things at anime Boston <laughs> last year or the year before and they're great but it says man eater so of course it's for lips um yeah it's got some stuff in it that I actually do use. But this bag, look how cute it is. Look how cute it is. These are so good. Now I'm gonna, I guess, zoom you guys in and uh, get started on like a basic face that you can use for kind of anything. Um, again, I often would use it for stage shows because it's relatively neutral. Um, you can use it if you're going out and you're not gonna like shellac on the glam and glitter and highlighter and whatever, like it's just a basic simple look if you like me really have no idea what you're doing and you need to like pretend to fake it because that's another thing that i'm gonna say here this is not like pro techniques this is not i'm not like i didn't work at mac i don't really have any makeup knowledge past what i've seen in tutorials and past like me deciding to do makeup so uh yeah if you're interested in that then uh feel free to continue watching and i'm probably gonna make some sarcastic comments i'm probably gonna swear a little and i'm probably going to mess up so <laughs> yeah stick around if you're interested in that hey so we're zoomed in on my face uh you might notice that my face is unevenly toned and i have wrinkles uh that's because i don't do skincare i don't care about skincare i wash my face like when i'm in the shower with water usually. I'd say I look pretty okay for a 31 year old who has never taken consistent care of their skin based on what people say you're supposed to do for your skin, but um, yeah, I, I will never give you any skincare tips. I shouldn't even really be giving you makeup tips because I'm, again, entirely inexperienced at this, but I figure, again, there's like some room for people who don't know how to do makeup doing really basic makeup to help other people who don't know how to do makeup. I have a niche audience. The first step, as far as I have been able to understand from people on YouTube, is that you're supposed to prime your face so that like the makeup sits better or stays longer, I think is the point. This is Tone Adjusting Face Primer by e.l.f. It's purple. It doesn't stay purple. 
when it goes on your skin. Um, but it looks purple in the bottle and in your hand. Uh, I don't notice that it adjusts my tone. I have some like pore blurry stuff. I don't notice that that blurs my pores. I have some old Victoria's Secret primer in a tube. And none of these things I notice make like a huge, huge difference. But again, like it's not like I'm testing them against each other. It's not like I wear makeup often enough anyway. I will say that being on stage for, you know, three hours or whatever in an evening, my makeup stays on. So we're going to keep doing it. So for this stuff, I just apply it with my hands. You're going to have to watch me like looking at the monitor some to apply because I don't have a mirror set up because I don't do makeup videos. Yeah. So this start with one pump. Like it doesn't, you don't need that much of it. Ugh, I can't see. I don't have a good grasp of my life and where my hands are. And just like spread it around your face. You can do this with a beauty blender. You can do it with a brush. Like you can do it any way that you particularly feel like. But what you should, you know, you'll feel it. It's like smoothing out your face. There's stuff in it. There's like silicone or some, I don't know. But it smooths out your face some. It's supposed to, you know, blur your pores and whatever. Um, but yeah. See? Oh, I was going to say see not purple, but of course I got a glob of purple from some dried up stuff. Good looks. Um, yeah, so that's your primer. Nothing has changed on my face. It's not like we're not going for a dewy glow here. We're literally just going for like the stuff that theoretically helps the makeup stay on better. I came in a little closer even just because I felt like it was weird. Um, so I wet this kind of old, does not want to release the product as many times as I wash it. Um, I just dampened this. Beauty Blender, it's not It's not a Beauty Blender brand Beauty Blender. It's like a Real Techniques. It's a, It's their like Beauty Blender. I have this Fenty Beauty. I want it to work. I can't make it work. It looks cakey and whatnot on my skin. It's probably something to do with that lack of skincare, but I cannot make it work. The one that I've found that works for me is Makeup Forever. I can't, I don't have autofocus. Uh, Makeup Forever. What I do is I squirt it on my hand, like the corner of my hand here. Two or three, honestly, because it's you have a big face. It's fine. And then just like schwamp it onto the beauty blender, like so. And then just go like this. Just pat it in. Like, this is what I do. It's, it's probably not the best application system ever. Not doing the best job. But like smack it into your face. This Patrick Star Compact is really cute. So let's use that as a mirror. Wow. Okay. So it's um not terribly difficult. This stuff goes on really easily. I never see anyone using it. It's probably not like a great beauty guru kind of product, but um I love it. It works well for me. It doesn't look cakey. It blends pretty okay. Big pores on my nose. Those are never gonna go away, so that's fine. We're not worried about it. I don't know how people get in there. Like I have big <laughs> nostrils, I feel like, so it's hard. But yeah, just like whack your face with the foundation. Try not to do what I just did and like crease your forehead while you're doing it because that's gonna make the uh, the creases in your forehead bigger. It's the same way of like looking up when you're doing concealer, but yeah. Also do this, I have a widow's peak. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry that the light just totally changed, but I had to turn on my fancy pants lights. Uh, <laughs> also sorry for train noises. I live next to a train station. Uh, yeah, I didn't have enough light to do anything because the sunlight is failing me. I was like, let me record during the day. The sun's out. I like sunlight. I prefer that tone. The lights are a little cooler tone than I like. Ooh, now I look really yellowy. This is excellent. That's a great look. Anyway, the lighting, sorry, you can't avoid it. It's just doing what it's gonna do. Uh, it's better for me to be able to tell in real life what I look like though. I might have to turn the overhead back on. Yeah, we're just gonna have to leave. We're gonna have to leave all the lights on. Okay, so 
See what's happening here? I'm creasing my my top of my forehead. Um, one of the ways that the beauty gurus tell you to prevent that is by uh, powdering your face. So I do that. This is another Kimberly Clark shout out. It's Cody Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder. She said to get it, so I got it. Um, it comes with a little face poof, and honestly, who cares? I'm using it. I have a powder brush also that you can, that I can use. See, because what I did there, I just uh, smacked a bunch of powder on my face, and now there's just a bunch of powder on my face. But powder your face, it'll help to stop creasing. I don't care about wrinkles, as you can probably surmise, since I don't care about skincare. Um, but there's this thing that you do. Some people like pack the powder on to set the foundation. I'll just do like a little bit. Just to help it along. Not a ton. It also smells really pretty and it's just like, oh, look at me. I'm pretty. I'm putting, oh, yes, I'm putting my powder on. Also like normal people blend into the neck. I do sometimes. If I'm paying attention. Like, uh, but my skin tones are all different colors anyway. Like, <laughs> Like, look at my arms next to my face. Everything is different colors. Everything everything is different colors. Everything is different tones. It's just gonna be what it's gonna be. Then I normally do the eyes. This palette, the Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette, um, I got, because I watch too much YouTube, it's a lot of sort of nudes and um, some light shimmers and whatnot, but it's all, it's relatively neutral toned, which I like. Um, again, before this, I used the Naked palette an awful lot. This one does come with a brush. I learned over time, as you do, that, you know, you should use the brushes that are meant for the thing you're doing. Can we just talk about this? How one of these is a highlight brush and one of these is like an eyeshadow brush. And they're almost the same size and they look almost exactly the same, except one of them goes slightly like this and one of them goes more like this. Really? Um, this one's the eyeshadow brush. So this and a couple of others that are useful. This is like a kind of liney brush if you want to smoke the eye out. This is like a, a padding on pigment kind of brush. So can be useful. Keeping those handy. But honestly, I use this for more than I probably should. What I'll often do is I'll go in with Big Baby, which is this one here. It's just sort of like a light... It's kind of a skin tone. Oh, you know what else I do? You know what else I do first? Primer. Again, like not truly necessary. Um, and not, uh, this isn't necessarily the best kind. A few tutorials will tell you to use the MAC paint pot, or she used to. She like stopped doing that and I'm like, is there drama or did you just like get tired of that particular continue like ongoing joke or what? But anyway, oh, you know what? No, I'm lying completely anyway. I didn't finish my face. Rewind. This is though, this is an important thing. <laughs> this happens. You'll be doing your makeup and you're like, oh my God, I forgot a blah, blah. It's okay. Just go back and do it. Don't worry. The world is not ending. I had born this way because they didn't have, I was at Sephora and you can't get shape tape, but then I got shape tape and now I'm like, I'm going to use shape tape. Um, you'll see some people use shape tape like they'll do the like all the way down and then across the cheek. I don't go quite that crazy with it. Yes, I have this damn applicator. Um, also, the problem for me is my I have this mole here. I have the Mediterranean under eye bags. You're never going to fully get rid of those. So uh, I do what I can, but I don't get too crazy. Kind of do this nonsense. Just, just do what feels right. Some people let it dry down a little. Some people have real techniques for it. I don't. I put it on. It smells good. I take my beauty blender that I dropped somewhere and I go like this. And if I'm smart, I use the right end. Some people avoid creasing, not me. Uh -uh. I don't know if I need to get the doe foot farther in or what, but 
I can never get it in there. That's probably due to the fact that I don't moisturize. <laughs> that I have like not only under eye bags, but under eye bags that like are dry. Okay, so now this is all not at all blended into my foundation. So I'm just gonna like use that other side again to kind of blend the edges out. Looks fine here. Doesn't look great here. No, it looks okay. But do you see what I'm saying? Like there's only so much, I know you can like use hemorrhoid cream or I know there are real creams for it, but there's only so much you can ever do to get rid of that. Um, and it doesn't bother me that much, so I don't tend to. Um, it actually does bother me to get rid of this mole a little bit, but it's like, this is how they say to do it, so I'm gonna do, like nobody's going around doing makeup tutorials on like how to do your concealer, but avoid your mole that's under your eye that you actually like. So maybe I'll just go in afterward and carve it out. Anyway, that's concealed. Um, you can obviously also conceal other things. You can like highlight your face with concealer and blah, 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 and people do it up here. I don't do that because who the hell cares? That's my feeling. Okay, but we're concealed now. So now we do the eyeshadow. She says, putting down the eyeshadow palette that she was just holding open as a mirror. Going in with Big Baby, like I mentioned before. And I just go across the lid softly with that. So that's just kind of like making a base. Sometimes if I'm feeling smart, I go up with it so that there's sort of like, there's like this sort of, beigey skin tone for me base on my eyeshadow, uh, eyelid. Basic, super easy. It kind of makes it all one tone in a way that that primer doesn't. That's not one of the, like really pigmented Urban Decay eye primers. So um, it just kind of gives it a little bit more of that like, oh, here's all one, you know, this is closer to closer to a single tone. And then what I do is I take, I'll take another shade, which is a little darker, like say, SFS, for example, which I don't know what that stands for because I'm not a good enough Graveyard Girl fan. Uh, and then just kind of do this. When they say like tiny swirling motions, what I usually do, okay, so creases are hard. The crease is not actually this crease. They mean like this, like right under your brow bone. So it's a little bit hard to demonstrate. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just sort of work that in the corner, the out, like the, the crease in the outer corner of my eye. I get scared of going too far outside of my eye with stuff. So I tend to stay like sort of in this corner and I just, this is not a tiny brush. This is not a clean brush that I have switched for new colors. I just go sort of in and out and in and out and in and out, picking up more as I need to. And Nikki tutorial says to like blend with tiny circles. I don't have dainty, good blending hands, but um, but I tend to just kind of do what I can to like blend it out, make sure that it's soft, make sure that the lines are not harsh really from that. Um, also, just so you're aware, I'm blind in this eye, so I can't really see what I'm doing a lot of the time. And I obviously can't wear glasses while I'm doing makeup and I hate contacts and refuse to wear them. So this eye is effectively useless in a lot of things. Um, so if you're ever like, why is that one weird? Or like, why does, why isn't this one blended as well? Well, cause I can't see. So like, I don't get an even view of what I'm doing. Oh, also I totally skipped the like setting your under eye step, but that never helps me with my concealer. So that's why I skipped it. That's a lie. I skipped it because I forgot it, but like it, it doesn't help anyway. So I don't care. Um, so yeah, so I just do that and like soften it out. I like it. It's, it's, this is like a soft little look. Um, sometimes too, again, you can take this little angly, this little angly guy and like take some of that or another color and just like line under the eye, just like bring it together a little. This is actually like a little bit of a shimmery shade, so it isn't as, uh, It isn't as impactful as it is when I do it with like some of the purpley colors. Um, but that's just like a basic little thing that you can do. If you like to stay highlighted under your brow bone, take like Gator Wings is the highlighter from this palette. Um, I often will just use everything from a palette because it's easier and you can just kind of highlight right under the brow there. Just blend it across, like just make sure it's not too harsh of a line. Um, and then like, 
Yeah. And then just like assess your situation. Do you like that? Is that enough? Highlight. Do you want to highlight in the inner corner so that you look younger? That's a tip that I learned years and years ago before like everyone on the planet was doing makeup tutorials on YouTube. Highlight your inner corner. It'll make you look younger. I don't do it well. I don't do it carefully. I don't do it with precision. I just do it. Um, this is just like, look at that was two colors and it took like two minutes. I mean, it took like five minutes cause I'm slow. Um, <laughs> but that's like a basic, it just softens the eye out a little bit. I always, just so you're aware, I always do this. I always try to even out the sides of my face because again, this goes back to my right eye being blind. So like, I always feel like one looks very different than the other. Um, but yeah, you can kind of blend as much as you need to, yada, yada. Also, I'm literally just wiping my brush on my shirt because I'm wearing a janky old shirt and I don't super care. Okay, so this is kind of like a hot mess, but it's easy. My face looks slightly made up there, you know? Okay. Um, another thing you can do is your brows. I have a couple of things for brows. By the way, not lining my eyes. I line my eyes on rare occasions. What I will do is tight line, but let me see if I can really demonstrate for you how bad my eyes are, my right eye is. Ooh. Tight lighting is a thing that I, oops, see, look at that. Uh, tight lighting is a thing that I learned about at some point. I don't remember if it's because like I realized that when people did my makeup, something imperceptibly changed about my face or what it was, but at some point I learned what tight lighting was and I was like, oh, that's something I should maybe try doing. This is a smudger, not an eraser, but I'm trying to use it as an eraser. Ah! I, will, I liked where this was going and then I messed it up. Nope, that's highlighter. Don't pull that shade. just want to go in and soften where I just messed it up a little bit. Not the end of the world, not something you're going to like notice from a distance, but, um, yeah. So tight lining is a thing that at some point I noticed was like, I realized I looked different when people did my makeup versus when I did it. I was like, it's cause I can't do eyeliner. And, uh, Ugh. And uh, then I like, I don't know if I looked up eyeliner techniques or what. Basically what you're doing is you're lying behind your eyelashes. Um, one issue that can happen with it is it can stamp down to your lower. If you like are too much on the waterline, it can stamp down to your lower lid, which isn't great. Um, but I messed that one up too. Um, but basically what you're doing is you're like, you're lining the eye in a more, you're not lining on your eye lid. You're lining in where your, um, eyelashes grow. So it looks like thicker and fuller there. And legitimately it has like changed my eye shape before. Like I've done, I've been in weddings and I've gotten my makeup done and I've been like, why don't I look like me in these pictures? And then I realized it's because they tight lined which they did not do on my wedding day because I was like, I want to look like me. Um, find a good person for your wedding. Okay. Imperceptible at the moment, but it does make a difference. Um, again, you can also do eyebrows. I have Tarte Arch Architect, which I tend to use. I also got um, the Amazonian Clay Waterproof Brow Mousse, like on sale, it has little thingies. Um, honestly, I don't do a ton to my brows, but you can do them if you want to fill them in, if you want to pretend, um, like look at, looking at my brows, I don't tweeze them. You'll note like all these baby hairs. I just don't tweeze them. So often what I'll do is I won't even actually fill them. Like I fill them if I feel like it, or if I really feel like being on stage, if I want to make them more severe, then I'll fill them, but they're pretty severe as it is. They're pretty full. Um, so I'm just going to leave them as they are today, but you can do it. It's basically 
take this guy, dip it in the stuff, kind of do like little thin feathers, brush these up and then over. Ta-da, you have eyebrows. Um, I'm not enough, I'm not a pro at any of this, but I'm like extra amateur at that. So we're gonna leave it. Um, okay. Oh, mascara. I'm doing mascara. I don't wear false lashes, including on stage. I wore them, I think, at my sister's wedding, but I don't, I can't put them on. Again, this eye doesn't work. So anything I need to do to this eye gets really handicapped by the fact that I can't see out of this eye while I'm doing it. Uh, so I don't tend to do false lashes. This eye also like overreacts when things are poking near it because it's the one that can see. So we don't do that. So eyelash curler. Also kind of difficult because one eye can see and the other can't. But center it as much as you can. Squeeze your shit. I don't know how long you're supposed to hold it. I hold it for like a while usually. <laughs> and then sometimes I get bored. Sometimes I like crimp up as I go too, but... I don't have the greatest lashes on the planet. My sister got the good lashes in the family. So uh, this is the hard one. This is the one where every time I get nervous to get too close and then I'm like, I have to get closer so that I can actually make it look good. And then I get closer and I like grab my actual eyelid and it's not fun. That's the only time I would agree that these are a torture device. 20 seconds left. So... Yeah, I also never catch all of them quite right. It's not great. Okay, so we are, we're slightly curled. The right one is better than the left one. Why do you do this to me, eyes? These like, it also like, these slant in. I don't know how to explain it. It's bad times. Anyway, the mascara that I like, um, I had, I like the, I have Smashbox that I like that's not waterproof. Um, Lights, Camera, Splashes is the Tarte waterproof. You'll note that I have a lot of Tarte products. I have a little bit of Too Faced. The reason I don't have tar uh, Too Faced better than sex is because when I was looking for waterproof mascara, I was like mad about Too Faced because I had seen some video about them cutting a bad deal with Nikki Tutorials or something and like screwing our screwing her out of money. So um, I basically was like, I'm not buying Too Faced products. I hate this packaging. I like the better than sex packaging way more, but we'll deal with it. Um, it is really good. It is really... Uh, it's not too thick, even though it's waterproof, and it is very waterproof. I'm not gonna be able to get this off later. It's gonna be really fun. It has a decent little brush here. It's not huge, but it's not tiny either. Um, and what I do is I just blink it on, kinda. Ugh, and then I always do that. I always do that. It's fine. We'll fix it. Um, don't try to conceal over that, though, if you did that, because I've tried that before. And all it does is ruin everything. I just really like to try to get those corners. Some people do the bottom lashes. I don't tend to do the bottom lashes because mine are very wispy and they look very wispy and it's not what I'm going for. Sometimes I'll dip before I do the second eye. Sometimes I don't. Yes. Get in there. A bit too ambitious trying to get into the really like in the inner corner. But see how that's like, it's not clumpy. There are a couple that aren't like super fine, but it's not clumpy, um, but it is still waterproof. So it works really well. I love it. It's great stuff. Now we're going to go back in with a little of SFS and just like blur over my mistakes. Also don't, the other thing to do is don't do this while the mascara is still wet. I just broke that rule, but um, if you let the mascara dry first, Generally speaking, you're going to have a better result. You can actually kind of scrape it off a little bit. Um, if you try to go in and like blend something with it, you're going to screw everything up. Okay, so we have eyes. We have eyes. There are eyes done. Um, now I do the rest of the face. This is where my precious Pirates of the Caribbean face palette comes. This is Pirates of the Caribbean like five. I have not seen this movie. I probably won't see this movie. Um, but... It's a nice little palette. It had some face stuff in it that I didn't really have before. This is the Morphe M143 that everyone for a while, Nikki Tutorials, was saying you needed for your contour. No one doesn't use it anymore. Whatever. Um, it's a it's a it's a fun little brush, okay? You go dippy 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 in the center, and then I often suck in like this. 
I have high cheekbones as it is, but I like suck my face in sometimes to like get that, to find where that shadow is. And then you just go along with the existing shadow. I'm lucky that I already have this existing shadow and I can sort of just follow it and then like use the side of the brush a little bit to blend it. This is not, again, not a pro technique, just like a do what you need to get by. Again, another thing that does suffer for my being blind in one eye though, because like I never, ever, ever feel like it's even. Ever. So I like put way too much on one side and not enough on the other and yada, yada. So whatever. We all have our struggles. We all have our struggles. I just can't see the side, that side as well. Um, but yeah, then you, you're carving out a cheekbone a little bit and then you're sort of blending it with the flat side of the brush. It's relatively easy, it's quick and painless. I didn't do anything crazy there, you'll see. Like there's not, that's not heavy. I don't do like this around the hairline. I don't contour heavily. Just, I just like to carve those out. For blush, I'm gonna go in with this Tarte sample. It's Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in Party. This is a blush brush. It's fluffy at the tip and it's got that whoop shape. It's like a balloon shape. Whereas this is a contouring brush and this is like a foundation powder brush, whatever. Foundation powder, good words, okay, so. Dip into the pan, not complicated. Get another mirror because the tiny sample doesn't have a mirror in it because why would it? Smile. This is always what, I, this is what I've done since I was a kid when I first had to put makeup on for dance class. So like dance recitals. So like don't go with it, but go with it. Smile and then just put it up the apple of your cheek a little bit and, and back this, brush it back this way. Keep smiling. Oh, my lighting is problematic. But it's like, we're just going for like a light, blush look here you know so i also do a lot of brushing with it i do a lot of blending with it because i don't want it to be like a stark blush so like blush like blend it out is that just my cheek being red i think it is we'll see and then we have a tiny highlighting brush and we have fenty beauty this is the kilowatt with uh, in lightning dust and fire crystal. This is hard <clears throat> for me to open. I have nails and you get to see my shame. I dug this one out with my nail when I was trying to open it, like the, one of the first times I opened it. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> cause it's not cheap and it's also really pretty. And I was like real mad about it. Um, so you can go with, you know, you can go with like a little sparkly highlighter if you want to. I just do this like sort of at the top of the cheek. And again, I sort of try to blend it. I hate tiny highlighter brushes, but that's what they say to use. So like I tend to smile just so I can see the top of the cheek a little better, define it. Um, and then just give it like a little glow, not nothing cuckoo. Um, I know a lot of people do, they do like up here. Um, I will do the like down the nose and tip of the nose highlight. And then I will also do the Cupid's bow because I like it. I think it's cute. That's more than you needed, but who cares? We're having fun. So you can see that I still have a relatively basic look going on here, but there's a little bit of glow. Okay, and then for our final area, cause like this is it about, we're gonna do lips. Don't know what we're gonna do with them. My go-to lip for a couple of years has been this NARS pencil in Rikugian, Rikugian something. Um, I have two of it. This is actually, this is the original sample that I got. This was in the September set. September gift birthday set a few years ago with um, Cruella, which I also have in both that small size and um, a large one. I think I threw this at the wall. Yeah, I like threw this at one. I didn't throw it. I went to put it away and this happens. Do you see this? Do you see what's happening? It goes and it pushes off and I like went to put it away and that happened and it like the lid came off and I was pretty devastated anyway 
Um, the Rikugian one is a satin lip pencil, so it's not matte. Um, it's a nice like satiny thing. I know it says it's a lip pencil. It's probably, it could be meant to be used as a liner. I don't use it as a liner. I use it as my whole lipstick. I truly am not good at sharpening these things, so it's gonna be stubby. You're gonna see some struggles to apply. It's fine. But, uh, oh no, look, still going on really well, even though it needs to be sharpened. <laughs> uh, I tend to go initially conservative and then I line out to that like fleshier bit. I own it. I'm like, I'm making my lips fuller. Um, the tops I do really bad at, so be prepared. Again, I think potentially due to how my eyes work, I have a hard time making them even. And I don't like to overline, but I like to have my lips be full. So it's like this hard balance to strike. <laughs> the problem with this not being sharp is it's like scraping itself off of my lips as I'm applying it. Okay, but that's not bad. So there you go. Um, this is my finished look, effectively. Um, I do also have this NYX matte finish and I don't really have anything good to like whoop my face with afterward, but we're gonna use this, I guess. That'll work. Um, Godspeed with this. It's difficult. What I tend to do is I breathe in as I'm preparing to pump and then I just like try to surprise myself with a pump so I don't scrunch my face up and I try to breathe out when I'm doing it. I didn't get it from all directions. It's way more wet in the center of my face, <laughs> but that's what I do. So, that's that's really it let's zoom back out so yeah this is the finished look um you really don't need to do everything that i did you don't need to get all of the makeup that i got to get this kind of a look there are plenty of things in the drugstore that will get you here um find something that works for your skin tone um that's like a nice sort of pink decent like this is like to me this is like a pinky nude almost i know it's not really a nude but um, it's not hot pink. It's definitely like sort of a more relaxed, um, casual pink. Um, get yourself a decent neutral eye palette um, and a face palette that you can do some highlighting and minimal contouring with. Um, and then you can just have like a nice little basic look like this. We're not going glam. We're not going, um, you know, professional. We're not going, we're not even really going like, change your face shape. We're just highlighting what's already there in your face. Um, you'll note, like I didn't do anything that's meant to modify what I truly look like. Um, I just did a lot of, you know, accentuating what's already there. Um, and to me, it just makes it look like you put in a little effort. Um, it makes it look like you've done a little finishing work. It's nothing that's meant to say like, look how gorgeous I am. Ah, oh, let's do a montage of my face look at me uh, like that's none of the it's none of that like it's not and it's not trying to be extra it's really just meant to be i'm wearing makeup but it's still relatively natural which is hilarious because again um <laughs> you're gonna see this video is like a you know i don't know like probably 10 or 20 minutes long at most um i'm looking at my audio recording and I've been working on this for over an hour. So normally if I wasn't videoing it and I wasn't like talking through it necessarily, it might take me less time. I do tend to sort of try to do it in more like a half an hour, but um, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, oh yeah, it's natural makeup. Well, you looked at the number of products I put on my face. Like this is not natural. Most people would perceive this as a natural makeup look <laughs> and it's not, it's not like there's no makeup there, so. To guys who say, oh, I like girls who don't wear makeup about a look that looks like this. There are a lot of products involved in getting your face to look like this. So get out of here with that shit. 
So anyway, <laughs> if you liked this, um, I mean, you can subscribe if you want, but realistically, I'm probably not going to be doing more makeup tutorials. I might occasionally do one with like a more colorful palette just to be like, here's a way you can do almost exactly this look, but with like some purpley whatever on the edges of your eyes. Um, cause I've done a few different looks in the past. Like I did eventually try the Miso Chic palette that I unboxed. Um, I have done work with color before, but, um, for me, like this is a good go-to and I figure it's a relatively easy thing to follow because I've shown you that I didn't use any techniques that are like, oh, and do this little tiny thing and draw a tiny line and like whatever. It doesn't have to be that complicated. You can do something relatively quickly that will look relatively polished on your face. With that, I'm just gonna say goodbye. Um, have a great day and thank you so much for watching.